Hi everybody and welcome to At Home With The Grand and another one of um, our photography videos uh, trying to help you improve your photography and take it on to the next level. And in this particular video what I want to talk about is you helping to control the colour in your photographs. Okay? Because normally with most cameras, a bit like automatic exposure which we talked about in some of the other videos, you have automatic white balance control in your camera too which makes a decision about the colour of your photographs. And what I want to talk to you today is about you taking that decision away from the camera and you making your creative control about the colour of your photographs. Now, just to talk a little bit about colour in photography, um, so you understand the basics, and this will then make sense about the auto white balance, etc. Every type of light source we look at has a different colour. So, daylight and, and, and these colours are measured in what we call kelvins. I don't want to get too technical but I think it'll just help to go through this in kelvins. So for example daylight is measured at 5500 kelvin. Tungsten lighting like you get in the Grand Theatre is measured at approximately 2300-400 kelvin. Okay? Fluorescent lighting can be measured at either 3600 3, kelvin for a warmer fluorescent or 4400 Kelvin for a cooler fluorescent. You might see this with some of the LED lighting that's coming on the market now if you're buying it for your house. They have cooler bulbs, warmer bulbs. So each type of lighting has a different colour temperature. Now the eye is a wonderful thing. It will look at a scene, you walk into a scene, and it will very quickly adjust to whatever colours are, are, are happening. Obviously you've got a roaring log fire and candlelight, it will appear warmer but not as warm as it really is. Your eye figures it out. If you use your camera to take photographs in these environments, okay, and if it's in auto white balance mode, AWB as you see in a lot of the menus, it will look at the scene, figure out the colour, and try and correct it, try and make it more neutral. And what it's trying to do is take that colour roughly back towards daylight. And believe you and me, depending on which camera you have, or AWB can work really, really well. I mean, controlling colour temperature and colour lights was something that was very difficult to do when we shot film because a film emulsion only had one colour temperature. Some of it was daylight balanced, some tungsten balanced. Whereas a digital camera has the option to put its colour temperature or the way it sees colour anywhere it wants. So auto white balance will make that decision for you. And where this can sort of go wrong sometimes for you is, it's like you say you've got a lovely candle lit scene and you, see, you want all the warmth of that scene, which you're seeing when you're in it. The camera will see all this yellow light and try and compensate for it because it's trying to go back to this neutral point. A bit like with exposure, trying to get back to this neutral point. And then a lot of times it'll do a really good job. But there'll be creative times when it will alter things for you and you'll find it as a photographer. I'm sure you've all taken them. We've talked about this before, the traditional sunset. Wow, it looks so red. So when you get a picture, it's not quite right. It's not how I saw it. Because the camera in automatic mode will try and compensate for you. So if you can make that decision about the colour, you can then record that scene, hopefully how you want to record that scene. Now, there's two ways of controlling the colour you see in digital photography. You can do it in the camera by going in the menu and coming out of auto white balance and then you'll be given a series of settings. There'll be a daylight setting, there'll probably be a cloudy setting, there may even be a flash setting, there'll certainly be a tungsten and a fluorescent setting. Depending on how sophisticated your camera is, it will let you put it in one of these areas. You make a manual decision about that set it in your camera and your camera will only work then to that colour temperature or colour setting a bit like it does when we shot film in those ways or the other way if you have the image in the proprietary software the raw file as we talked about before then you can control the colour in there but if you're controlling it in the proprietary software a la Lightroom or Affinity Photo or something like that you have absolute full control so on the camera, as we said before, you have settings. It might be fluorescent, it might be tungsten, a specific temperature, specific number. When you're in the proprietary software, you can alter that number by one degree, by 20 degrees, whatever you want to do. So it gives you really, really fine control. Now, for me as a photographer, 
the control of colour in digital photography is so much better than ever it was in film. In film it was very difficult, we had to use filters to change the colour because we only had certain emulsions available to certain colours. So it was very difficult but in digital it is so so easy and you're looking at it on your screen or your, your tablet at home so you can actually see the colour of your picture, decide what appeals to you. This is great where your creativity comes into it. You can create your own colour palette if you want to into your photography and I mean you see such high quality TV now, TV shows on TV that are so beautifully filmed and I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of shows have a certain look to the colour. I mean this is getting quite sophisticated now but just look and watch your favourite shows, particularly the box sets. See the quality of the, of the photography and the way they're using a slight colour tinge to their photographs. And there's nothing to stop you doing that with your photography. I mean, we're going on maybe two or three levels now, but let's be ambitious. We can do that. OK. And also with colour, we've talked about seeing scenes how you want to see them. So we're getting colours, you know, like candlelight, we want it to be warm or whatever. OK early morning or snow scenes we might want them to be cooler but what you can also do is you can add your own creative element with colour so for instance you could put say you had <clears throat> a certain scene under daylight you could then put the setting either in your camera or afterwards in the software to a more say tungsten setting where, where it thinks there's a lot of yellow in the picture make everything very blue and very cool and get a different feel to your imagery so this is what I mean, this is why I'm, I'm so excited about this colour element of photography because it gives you so many opportunities to change the feel of your photography not only to get what you're trying to capture as we've talked about but also then to add maybe another element to other areas of your photography get a certain coolness or a certain warmth to your imagery however you want to work it so it's giving you so much freedom to do that okay so I think if you're watching this video also if you get a chance to watch the, the one on RAW and JPEG because I think there'll be some overlap here with the advantage of being able to shoot a RAW file to give you this real fine tuning colour control but if you want to shoot JPEGs and do it simpler in your camera then you can do the colour settings within your camera nearly all the cameras will have some form of colour setting <coughs> or as I've said before why not shoot a RAW and a JPEG at the same time so if the JPEG colour isn't quite what you want, even if you've got your camera set in the auto white balance mode for example, afterwards you can then make that decision with the colour later. So it's like I said to you before, there's this option if you shoot a RAW and a JPEG of being able to change the colour later. So sometimes that might do for now but later on you might think, do you know what, I think I can get more out of that. By shooting that RAW file it gives you that ability to change the colour within your pictures or add an element of colour that you want to put into that, a tone into your imagery. It really will make quite a difference. So I hope that's made sense. I know it's a little bit more in depth on the colour, but I think it's really, really worth it to pursue that through. So again, give us the likes and the shares with the Grand, keep connecting with us and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the Grand in the near future and maybe see you on one of the other videos. So thank you very much.